In this video, I'm going to go over some common errors that you'll run into when working with loft nerves and how to correct them. So the first problem that I see a lot is that you'll create a loft nerve and you mean to create something that looks like this, but in the end what you get is something that looks like this, where you've got the shapes sort of wrapping back on themselves. And that's because your loft nerves uh, cares about the order that the splines are inside of it. So it doesn't just vacuform a skin around all of the splines. It, it vacuforms the skin in order. So my first spline right here is the circle. My second spline in my loft nerves is this circle over here. And my third spline is the star. What I actually want is my first spline to be the circle, the second the star, and the third my final circle. So just drag your problematic spline uh, up higher in the hierarchy and adjust its order. When I'm creating uh, splines for my loft nerves, I always work from my previous spline. I hold down control and duplicate it and make it the next one in the list so that I always have my order already set up properly. Uh, but again, if things get out of order, the key is just to figure out what the order should be and reorder your splines. Now, another problem that you'll often run into is that you want to have a nice, smooth-looking shape like this, but what you end up with is this uh, chunky, low-polygon-looking uh, asterisk kind of thing over here. And that's because loft nerves uh, have detail settings that need to be adjusted based on the spline. If this was a circle, we'd have plenty of detail, but because we've got this intricate flower shape, we need to increase the number of subdivisions in U. So to do that, click on your loft nerves and adjust the mesh subdivisions U setting. And you want to increase that number until you've got a good uh, version of the form of your object. Mesh subdivisions V adds detail in the opposite direction. So if you have uh, quite a few splines, you're probably going to want to increase the number of mesh subdivisions V. And then the isoparm subdivision setting, that just affects how it displays in isoparm's view. So add or subtract isoparms as necessary, but that default value of 10 is usually uh, more than fine. Another problem that people will often run into is that they want to create a shape sort of like this, and they'll draw each of their splines individually. And the end result looks something like this, where you've got this weird twisting that's happening. Uh, when using loft nerves, you're best suited, or best served, excuse me, by m using the exact same spline, making a copy of it, and then changing the positions of your points. So that the loft nerves knows the relationship between each point. Otherwise, it's going to be forced to guess. So in this example, I've got different numbers of points in each of my splines. Uh, and that's really confusing my loft nerves. So far better to do something like I've done in this spline, where I took my, f uh, my first spline, and I added as much detail as I thought I would need in my most complicated spline, which is this one in the middle, and I duplicated it so that I've got the exact same spline from each of these. So the way that I would approach uh, this again, is I would take my very first spline, which is this circle. I would duplicate it. I would move my object back in Z, duplicate it again, so I'm creating the basic shape. And now I can feel free to come in and modify the points of my original spline. knowing that it's going to uh, blend smoothly and in a way that makes sense between them. Now, if you've got a problem and uh, you really just need a solution, say you have something that looks like this, where it's got that weird distortion, uh, that's because it's trying to connect the wrong point to the wrong point over here. And an easy solution would be to just select all of my points right here on my circle and rotate them until uh, it smooths things out. 
Another option would be to uh, select different points and try choosing them as your first point. And you do that by selecting a point, right clicking, and choose set first point. And we can see that this is not a good first point. Let's see what happens when we try this one. Oh, much better. So that's uh, a good solution that'll give Cinema 4D a hint as to how to go from spline to spline. Those are uh, the three most common problems I see with Lofnerbs. I'm sure there are many others. Uh, if you have uh, a problem, go ahead and post a comment, and I'll see if I can't put a, a video up about that. Uh, but best of luck to you.